uh, a few things that are in the bill that are okay. It's like saying that they have put a teaspoon of sugar in a drum of poison. Mr. Speaker, for me, I think this bill is something that we must reject in its totality. Mr. Speaker, the economic situation in this country is very dire. Kenyans are struggling. Kenyans are suffering. Mr. Speaker, very few Kenyans can actually put three or four square meals on a, in a day on the table. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans are asking themselves, do we put food on the table for our children? Or do we pay fees? Do we buy clothes? Everything is difficult. Life is difficult. Mr. Speaker, that is one of the reasons why you saw our team of Azimio going to the streets. Because we are feeling that somebody needs to start caring for the hustlers. Mr. Speaker, a hundred, a thousand shillings a few months ago could buy, uh, maybe even fill a paper bag. Mr. Speaker, today, with a thousand shillings, you cannot even buy two kilos of sugar, two kilos of, uh, of unga, two kilos of cooking flour. I mean, it's already finished, Mr. Speaker. So I'm telling you, it is a very bad situation. Now, this bill, when we heard that there was going to be some proposed amendments, we thought they would deal with those things that are affecting the cost of living. 16% VAT on petroleum products has been retained. Mr. Speaker, what does that mean? That the cost of everything transported, goods and services, will go up. The cost of electricity will go up. Mr. Speaker, there's also advance tax that has been proposed on personal public service vehicles and, of course, on transporters. Again, Mr. Speaker, the minute you increase taxation, what it does, Mr. Speaker, is that that will be passed on to the end user. And, Mr. Speaker, the end user is that person that we call the hustler. Mr. Speaker, who will speak for the hustlers? Mr. Speaker, our turnover tax, which is a tax on doing business where there is no profit, has gone up from 1% to 3%. Mr. Speaker, how do you tax people for having the dream of opening up a business? And we are being told that those at the bottom of the bracket are going to be raised, they are going to be assisted. Mr. Speaker, this was a hoax. Now Kenyans can see for themselves that there was never any good intention from this Kenya Kwanza regime. Mr. Speaker, this house must stand up to be counted. And this house must listen to the voice of Kenyans. Over 93% of Kenyans have said we reject the finance bill. 93% of Kenyans, those that voted for us. Mr. Speaker, I am shocked that members of the House can stand up and say, despite the fact that our, 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 our voters are unhappy with the bill, we shall continue and vote in its support. Mr. Speaker, yes, there is no... There's a point of order from the majority leader. There shouldn't be point of order. It is part of your debate. Honorable Speaker, I rise on standing order number 91. And I hear Robert Mbui saying there should be no points of order. Uh, but I think that is a prerogative of the Speaker. Honorable Speaker, standing order 91 speaks to the responsibility for statement of fact. And I've listened keenly to what the Honorable Mbui is saying. And Honorable Speaker, you did invite us to debate the finance bill. And it's only imperative on us that when we debate the finance bill, we restrict ourselves to facts that are in the finance bill and not use this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to deliberately mislead the country or play to the gallery. And I know uh, the Honorable Mualimu Robert Mbui has been a good teacher and a good legislator. But to state that the question of turnover tax is what he is misleading the country to believe knowing all too well, because he's a good teacher and he reads, he knows turnover tax is optional. You either choose to pay a turnover tax or, or you, you do your returns. True, Honorable Speaker. Order. What is out of order, Majority Leader? Honorable Speaker, what, what I found to be completely out of order. Order. What is out of order? Honorable, Honorable Speaker, what I found to be complete out of order is the misleading statements that are not based on fact that the Honorable Robert Bui is advancing and he should base his facts on what is in the bill. Order. O order, Honorable Members. Robert Bui, proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And please, Mr. Speaker, 
these frivolous points of order are just meant to waste time so that people cannot hear what we have to say. Mr. Speaker, I talked about things that are in the finance bill. Even the 3% turnover tax is in the finance bill, Mr. Speaker. And I said this, when will this house stand up to be counted? We are being controlled like puppets by the executive, Mr. Speaker. The executive stands and says they are going to watch how we vote. I don't know what will happen to us. Mr. Speaker, members of this house must ensure that the independence and the power of this house is respected so that we don't be taken for a ride. Mr. Speaker, the division of Kenyans by this executive has gone on for a very long time. They started with the issue of uh, hustlers versus dynasties. They talked about companies which I've had alluded to here, and shareholders and non-shareholders. Now we've also been told, oh, this bill, there's a fight between those who have salaries and those who do not have salaries. Mr. Speaker, we must make sure that we speak the truth. When you tell us that you want Kenyans to feel pain now, I don't know they will go to heaven sooner or start enjoying themselves. It reminds me of Shakahola, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> that is what the people of Shakahola told people. They told them, sell all your earthly uh, assets, come to us, starve and pay, suffer in pain, then die and see heaven. Mr. Speaker, we do not want our hustlers to die. We will speak for them. They are suffering enough, Mr. Speaker. This bill, we cannot allow it to continue hurting them more than that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have had a mention that Kenya is not highly taxed because I think, I don't know, Tunisia, Morocco, they, they, they are taxed more, they are taxed to GDP is higher. How do you compare Kenya with some of those countries? The average salary in Tunisia is 176,000 a month. Average salary in South Africa is 187,000 a month. Average salary in Morocco is 263,000 shillings a month. The average salary of a Kenyan is 22,000 shillings. How do you compare light and day? Mr. Speaker, let us talk the truth. Mr. Speaker, you know, when I listened to this team when they were speaking during the Kenya Kansa team during the campaigns, they talked about raising the hustlers. In this finance bill, there is a proposal to tax welfare groups. Welfare groups are those chamas of our women when they put money together, Mr. Speaker, so that they can do table banking. A thousand shillings each, they put it together, then it is taken by one. Now this team wants to tax that money, take money that these women have worked hard for, the hustler women of this country, the mamamboga, the border border. Can you people be fair to Kenyans? Members, let us stand up and oppose this bill, all of us. The voters are watching. The voters are watching. And I can tell you, those three people that you are respecting so much, when you lose the next election, they will not pick your cause. And by that time, even these positions of cabinet, I don't know, CASs, we will have fought them, we will have removed them. They will no longer be there. So members, please, let us vote. Order. Order, honorable members. In any civilized parliament, when you approve of what your colleague is saying, you thumb your feet. You thumb your feet. The way the minority leader is demonstrating. For those uh, honorable colleagues who are here for the first time, this is not a rally. This is a parliament. So thumb your feet in approval and keep your silence in your disapproval. Mohamed Ali Jijopevu. Asante sana, Mweshimiwa Speaker. Mimi nasimama kuunga mkono.